All right, what is going on, guys? It is the Chasing Waypoints podcast. <clears throat> we are back from Sonora Rally, and I do apologize. It has been a couple of days since we posted. Uh, the plan was uh, once we were down there to actually start uh, posting and getting uh, getting some live podcasts going, but uh, we were on the timing and scoring duties with Rally Comp and down there representing them and. Uh, helping bridge the gap between Rally Comp and the Sonora Rally organization. So, had a ton of fun doing that. Got to talk to a lot of great people. Met a lot of great people. Uh, looking forward to definitely getting some guests on the show. Now that we're back, we're going to get back into our normal weekly podcast. I do once again apologize, but hey, you know what? We were having a lot of fun down there, so uh, I am absolutely excited to bring you guys uh, some new episodes, get to recap and do some different stuff with uh, some of the guys that we met down there and got a chance to talk to. But tonight, well, tonight's tonight. I'll probably post this tonight anyway, just because it's been a while since we posted a podcast episode, and then we'll see you guys back here in a day or two for Sunday. Uh, but tonight, we've got somebody special. We're doing another In the Bivouac episode. This time around is going to be with none other than Mason Klein. So... Mason Klein, one of the young guns now in Rally Raid. We're going to be hearing his name a lot more often. He has been training with Skylar Howes, running around, getting road books made. He's kind of the road book guy uh, in that duo. Uh, both you know, both those guys making their own road books, but apparently uh, Mason Klein is really efficient at making them. So uh, I'm curious to pick his brain a little bit about how he goes about making it and then uh, also how his uh, experience was. Uh, with Sonora Rally, so let's get him the link. Let's see if we can get him on the show here in just a second. Turn down the music a little bit, a little bit, a little bit too hot. Too much party going on. So hope everybody has been well, getting to make their own road books and getting getting ready, get some stuff going. I did get to see a few of the Sonora Towers in person. Uh, Mo Hart. Uh, running one specifically on his bike, that thing was uh, was pretty awesome for sure. So, uh, if you guys haven't checked them out yet, I highly recommend them. A very clean and simple way of getting your roadbook stuff on a bike, and pretty universal. So, I was pretty pumped on seeing that. So, and it did well, all five stages, no problems. So, it was pretty rad. All right, <clears throat> well, let's get that link over to him. There it is. Let's kill the music. Let's see if we can hear him in here. But yeah, so it has been an interesting ride. For sure. Uh, got to spend some time down there. Oh, I, th I think I hear him. <laughs> Mason, what's up, dude? What's up? <laughs> nah. Just uh, sitting at my house, getting ready for this. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So, tell me a little bit. Uh, are you fully recuperated, Sonora Rally? Yeah, it's funny. My brother and I actually went on another ride the day after we got back because he was so bored just watching me ride the whole week. <laughs> nice. So, do you guys? So, do you guys train together? Are you both doing road books? Uh, yeah, Carter does road books but not as much as me like yeah. my dad and i usually do all the training together he mm -hmm. him and i just train for like regular riding stuff oh okay nice so let's start there where did uh where did this whole rally thing get started for you um well actually i went to a ktm adventure ride thing and uh, I met some of the guys from Moto Minded, mm -hmm. and uh, basically they let me know if I want to start doing stuff, I should start talking to Scott Bright, mm -hmm. and he actually had a school, and from there I was able to do my some of my first road books, and uh, yeah, I was hooked. Nice. I was like, I, 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 I was sick of all the desert racing and all the other stuff, I was like, this is what I want to be doing. Yeah. What's uh, what's the biggest difference for you between the two? I mean, because you're obviously per very proficient on the bike. I mean, you can ride this thing. So that's um, well, I like to fill up my tank all the way, mm -hmm. ride until I'm out, 
and get to fill it up again and keep going. That's pretty much like that's the best thing in the world for me. Nice. Get get to put the miles on it. And that Yeah, I like that. <clears throat> versus the versus the desert racing. Um I mean desert racing usually is more of a sprint race, right? I mean you're just as fast as you well, can go. Well I would I wouldn't say I wouldn't say a race like Sonora wasn't a sprint race because I feel like we were definitely pushing the whole time. <laughs> Yeah. But um, the the difference between the desert racing and the local district stuff now is I feel like it's more loop racing. And with rally, you're always seeing something new. And that's what I really like about it. Okay. So more more of the adventure aspect. And so yeah. how, how um how much rally stuff have you done? So this, this year's Sonora Rally was your officially second rally that you've done? or it, This year was my... First time finishing the Snore Rally, okay. uh, and my second time doing it. Okay. Um, and I started doing Rally, like I said, in 2018 with Scott Bright. Mm-hmm. Basically, 2018 to 2020, it was just a lot of practice, learning how to do it, making sure I was ready to actually line up. Mm-hmm. I guess I practiced everything but uh, bike prep because a ground wire mounted into plastic on a like the way it came from the factory from ktm was through the subframe and into plastic like threaded into plastic huh. and uh i guess that's not per- that's not the perfect way to do it for rally so yeah that, that was that was some part of the learning from year one mm-hmm. and uh i obviously had a whole new whole year to get ready for the next year i was like mom Dad, I need a, I need a real bike one that's meant to be doing this. And I'm really glad we got one. We were able to get one in from Bass to Car mm-hmm. because uh, I had a pretty solid bike the whole week, no problems. Bike was good every day, and I was I was really happy about that. Yeah, and you were you're out there, uh, you're out there setting records. And I think we, in in one of the the times that we chatted before the stage start, you were talking about had had not. Uh, drop the bike yet yeah and that that was a goal of yours right yeah for <laughs> nice. sure keep it on two wheels always <laughs> and then and then something interesting happened on stage one the stage got cut short and the way the cards fell you ended up leading out on stage two yep fastest person to the check one just like it was year one nice and uh i was, I was like yeah done it before but it didn't actually mean anything and now it actually meant something and i was really happy because um i would tell my dad like i prefer to lead out that's the way i train obviously i don't really have anyone else to ride with mm-hmm. so i'm always going first mm-hmm. and I, I feel i feel less stress when i'm by myself going first and, and so i was really happy about that and that's very that's very unique because a lot of people there everybody dreads like you, if you walk through the bivouac and you talk about it it's like oh yeah I got to lead out tomorrow and it's like they don't want to do that and it seems like you feel at home leading out yeah well for me I feel like my issue I don't really have an issue with navigation mm-hmm. the only thing is where everybody else gets me is actual riding ability mm-hmm. so when I do start back obviously I don't I wouldn't lose as much time because they they have to slow down their riding speed mm-hmm. to match their navigation speed. Mm-hmm. Where I, if I start first, I have to navigate as good as I can and ride as hard as I can. I feel like I'm pushing the whole time. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas if I start further back, it's more about riding speed. Yeah, and trying to trying to catch the guy or rope rope in the guy in front of you. Yeah, I feel like it's it's obviously you still have to navigate, but it's it's less of the less of the work. Yeah, le- less work but more ride. More yeah. riding speed. And from what I hear and uh on one of the days I'm trying to remember was it day 1 or day 2? I think I heard Ricky uh Brabeck when he came back. I guess you had a pretty big pretty big moment out in the dunes, right? Yeah, on, trying on. to trying to stay up there with Andrew. Mm-hmm. I didn't know Ricky was there, which I thought was pretty funny. Yeah. Um basically he caught me right near the end of the stage. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And I was like, all right, so I'm not just going to let him go. I, I let him go around me, not that I had a choice. He got around me, and I, I basically told myself, I just want to try to keep up with them. 
and the way they're hitting stuff is just so insane. Like, I'm getting pretty sketch, and they're just hitting anything they want. Like, any bump in the ground, they just go right through it, launch off any dune. Andrew's pretty insane. Like, you could see where the, the Supercross might have a good role in the in the dunes because he's, he's thinking of the ground as a jump, you know. Or I'm like, that's a dune, and I need to, I need to roll over that. He says... The less time on the ground, the better. Yeah. And uh, just trying to keep up with them, I started swapping out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's just all suspension. In the future, probably have that more worked out if I have some more time on the bike. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, now now the bike is in the garage, so you'll get a you'll get a chance to tune it and and do more get it get it more to your riding style. How, yeah. How much time did you have on the bike before before Sonora Rally? I put a total of, I think, 15 hours on it, just doing some practice stuff. Mm -hmm. Went to Glamis, did a few road books. Okay. My friend Ryan Narino gave me a few books. Mm -hmm. We did some training with Jake Argybright. Okay. And I did a good amount of training with Happy Dave oh, okay. in DuPont. Yeah. So uh, a, a few road books, but none of it obviously race pace. So you, you're, you're focusing on practicing navigation you know you get to the race you forget that you forgot to set the bike up so uh that was just something i was dealing with kind of all week trying to decide which way to turn the clickers yeah and go back and forth do you do you have a suspension guy somebody that you work with already or are you or are you more self-taught uh well we i talked to dt racing throughout the week it's john tallarico mm -hmm. and uh he helped me kind of just walk me through the, like, if it's doing this, you should try this. And that was really helpful. Mm -hmm. So, um, and he also does our race stuff, like, for regular desert racing. Mm -hmm. And I, we think his work is pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, obviously, I mean, after seeing what you saw with these guys, you know, clearing dunes and doing all of this stuff, you can tell it, it's like a relationship. So it's somebody that you've already been working with for a while. You, he knows what you like. He knows your writing ability. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it's, now it's just a matter of dialing this thing in. Yeah, exactly. A couple more hundreds of thousands of hours and I'll get my <laughs> bike feeling just right. Well, these things, it's crazy, right? So you, what's, uh, what's your desert bike? What do you, what do you race in the desert? In the desert, I have a 2020 450 XC with six gears. Mm -hmm. It's like the perfect machine for the desert, in my opinion. Smooth power because it's the XC. Mm -hmm. And I uh, got that set up pretty good, I feel like. Yeah. And how does that, I mean, the obvious question, right? How close or how far apart is that from the rally bike? The rally bike's way better, honestly. Really? The suspension, mm -hmm. it feels like there's more of it, right? Okay. The bike stays straight. Gotcha. You hit stuff, unless you got eight gallons of gas total, you just got filled up and you're in the dunes, you know? Mm -hmm. Might get a little sketchy. But it is like the most solid bike I ever rode. The sound, so much better. Mm -hmm. uh, it might also be because there's no packing left in the pipe. But <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> the, 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 whatever yeah. technical things yeah the the motor mm -hmm. it's just the gear my gearing on it is pretty unbelievably tall or short i don't i don't know um it's like a it's a 1449 and i'm going 110 plus wow. where my my training ktm 500 i run a 1445 i could barely get 105 mm -hmm. so uh it has a lot of power it, Obviously, it's a huge advantage in the dunes because it's basically meant for that kind of riding. Okay. And um, it's kind of hard to explain why it's better, but it's just better. Yeah. You know? It turn, turns in better. I mean... Yeah. Flat tracking is so nice. The weight is so down low in the front tanks. Mm -hmm. um, the skid plate is huge, so you can hit anything you want. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and it's this, a great bike. And this is, so you'd mentioned earlier that this was one of the BAS bikes that you got? Exactly, yeah. They're running, this is this was a factory bike, right? Do you know what, what year is this thing? 
this is a 2020 450 RFR. It's actually okay. the same one Skyler raced at Andalusia before he raced the car. Okay. So it didn't have too many hours on it. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so yeah, so this is this is new, new. This is like the latest generation of these of these bikes. Well, actually, Skyler was on a twenty one in the car. Oh, okay. And now it's coming out with the twenty twos, so it's like a two year old bike. Mm-hmm. You think about it. Okay. But it's the same year as my four fifty that I have here. So, yeah. I mean, a twenty twenty isn't old. No, <laughs> right? But, uh, <laughs> that is only last year. <laughs> Yeah, well, when we go to the car, I guess it's going to be on a bike that's probably two years newer, Mm -hmm. which is kind of crazy to think. Yeah. In the different in the span of one year, Mm -hmm. they're already two years ahead. That's crazy. But I mean, that's that's the game, and especially now that Honda's been all of a sudden brought it to the table. Yeah, I know they they've definitely been doing a lot of work. I'm sure. Yeah. They they don't want to lose again. (laughs) <laughs> no, and then 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 insult to injury is then Honda backs it up with another win. <laughs> yeah, next year. Well, Be- hopefully, hopefully, getting Kevin on this on their side will help them out a little bit. Got a few more teammates to help each other out out there. Yeah, true. Yeah, that should definitely and, it, and that's pretty crazy. I mean that uh, like everybody helping everybody, and I mean you've seen it and you've been you've been in on that, and everybody's keeping an eye on you when you're out, you know, out and about. Yeah, it's nice no, knowing that there's a good chance that because you're all going the same way, there's always going to be someone out there to pick you up if you're down. Yeah, catch you, catch you on the other side, or you know, if you're if feeling a little lost or trouble with the navigation. But did you did you have any big uh, big navigation stuff happen this rally? Uh, stuff where you went off pay, off track. I mean, just really got turned around. I think it might have been um, day three. Okay. There was, there was a, a, I'm not even actually sure. Mm-hmm. Justin Morgan and I ended up together because, um, you know, the road says it's a road, but I, sh- I felt like it should have been like a more or less visible road in the road book because it was just not on the ground, you know? Mm-hmm. It, it was difficult because, like, you're looking for something, but you should be looking for something else. Gotcha. So that's, I don't know. I feel I feel like I was I didn't it wasn't an issue. Mm-hmm. But it was uh it, it was a mess up. It was it was easy. Yeah. yeah, it was easy to throw you off. Like you said, I mean if you yeah, exactly. you're looking for one thing and then you you blow right by what it actually was, you know, even though exactly. the, the note was bad. And so you you do a lot of road book making, right? That's what you're Yeah. Okay. What um I mean it's how this was actually in the in the intro. You you'll hear it once you hear the episode. But um, that was one of the things I wanted to pick your brain about because in, in talking to Skyler on a previous episode, he was talking that you you can come up with road books like really fast. And yeah. How how do you go about it? Like okay, I I want a road book for I'm not even going to say California because all the gates are locked here. But say in Skyler's neck of the woods, mm-hmm. how, how do you go about making a road book for that? Even though you've maybe not been there. Okay, so let's just say you are Skyler, mm-hmm. and you say, hey, Mason, I want to go ride my dirt bike. I want to do some road books. Mm-hmm. This is where I live. Can you look at the area? And basically what I'll do is I'll go on Google Earth, mm-hmm. and I'll look at the area. Way different when I get there, by the way. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Basically, just you got to zoom in pretty far, make sure there's no gates. That's the biggest thing is looking for gates mm-hmm. and – um you basically you get pretty creative, okay. Um, and you just—I I don't know. Hard to explain for yeah. sure. Well, so it sounds like you just you just fly it, and and to a certain point, it's like you're hoping for the best. You know, okay, yeah, exactly. Writing everything like it's everything is dangerous. You know, you don't have all of the exact details in the book, but you have the general directions. Yeah, it's easy to make like a super detailed, good navigation road book. Mm-hmm. But when you get there and you're actually riding the road book, things can be a lot different. For example, where I am near Palmdale, mm-hmm. there's a lot of roads on Google Earth. And you get there and the roads, they just moved them over. Like they just got a tractor and they moved the road over to put in some solar panels. Uh, so I'll be doing a road book. I'll get to the end of the road. Mm-hmm. The waypoint will open up. It's supposed to be at that intersection, but really it's like 400 feet to the right. Gotcha. In the middle of some solar panels. 
<laughs> so oops yeah it's it's obviously it can get pretty difficult when everything's changing mm-hmm. at that point um you need to make corrections and in Sonora, obviously they had a few corrections this year mm-hmm. and that's kind of all part of it so after if you make the road book you have to ride it you got to verify it mm-hmm. and that's what i've been doing with skylar uh, i went up like a week or two ago mm-hmm. right before sonora yeah and we are, we're just getting all the routes verified getting the, the final checks done on it so they're ready for other people to ride. Nice. It's definitely a process, multiple hour process, but getting the main chunk of it done is what I'm pretty good at. Yeah. yeah at least getting something, you know, that you can print out and, and get out there and at least give it a shot. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, I think for a lot of people, I mean, that's the hardest thing. Cause like, you know, the whole, the whole thing with this podcast is to try and get more people into rally raid and, 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 share stories like yours like hey this is how i do things and this is what i'm noticing and this is what i do um yeah and, and, and that's the thing with uh with road books it feels like there's not a lot of people that want to really share mm-hmm. so uh if you ever want a road book and you want it soon you could add me on instagram message me on instagram mason underscore klein one mm-hmm. just let me know where you want it and i'll make you a road book i got road books in canada arizona <laughs> nice. San Francisco. There you go. Like a- anywhere you want, I probably could get something done for you. Yeah. Um, just kind of sick of all the people keeping them secret, you know? Yeah. It- it's you want to get more people into the sport, but you don't want to let them ride. Mm-hmm. And that's and and that is a, a, a difficult part. I mean, because now just thinking at somebody that's starting from zero is like, OK, well, I have the money right brought to you in part by Visa. Talk to mm-hmm. talk to Matthew Glade. I got all of the, you know, I got the Sonora Tower, got everything done. Okay, now what do I load into this roadbook holder? And now they got to exactly. now they got to go learn. Do you use uh, Rally Navigator, Tulip? What's your your tool of choice? So for the last couple of years, I've been using Tulip, mm-hmm. but now um, I'm back to Rally Navigator, working with the actual creators of it. Mm-hmm. And they're we're working on a new program. It's like a desktop version rather than on the browser. Mm-hmm. So we've just been doing a lot of testing with that. Yeah, nice. and um, I really like it so far. It's got a lot of new features that aren't on the website, mm-hmm. and you can get some pretty detailed stuff. Like it, it's pretty nice. Yeah, that's going to be a, a huge update. And the, and they were down there, right? uh, Mike Shirley and Dave Peckham. Uh, yeah, I saw them driving around every day, <laughs> following following the caravan and and doing that. But yeah, I agree with you on that one because in in previous experience with with Baja Rally and having to do roadbook changes, you know, in Catavina where there was like no internet, you know, mm-hmm. it just was very 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 difficult. So I'm I'm glad that they're doing this desktop version, you know. Yeah, and that that was the thing with Tulip was it was easy. The roadbooks you mm-hmm. get the you get the PDF file right off the program. It, is done in like a second mm-hmm. with the browser version. If you didn't have bad internet, it would take forever. Yeah. Now with this new program they're working on, it's just so much quicker and so much easier. Nice. Yeah. I th- I look forward to that. That that's definitely going to be a huge, you know, huge training tool uh, to help, you know, make road books faster. And I mean, I'm sure I didn't ask Darren or Roto about what program they were using, but I'm pretty sure they're on Rally Navigator itself because it's just like kind of that's the program. It's at a professional level. Tulip. Yeah, it looks like they're they're using the the website version, which is mm-hmm. great because it has all the the um, automatic coloring, which is something pretty nice. Mm-hmm. One thing they did this year is they gave us the roadbooks in the morning, mm-hmm. and I thought that was definitely pretty cool. I don't understand how the the Dakar organization gets all the roadbooks so perfect in time for the morning it's obviously really difficult yeah. there's always something to fix exactly there's always that one you know that that one note or something you know that's just like oh, if we just made this tweak you know and and we saw it a lot you know at sonora rally right we saw the changes that were posted on the trailer and and, and how the organization yeah. was constantly updating that um i think they did a good uh, job though of like they i had no problems once i was out there Nice. They did a good job nice. making sure all the road books were good by the time we got them. Yeah. They're not not an easy feat with as many notes as have no. to be in there and all the notes have to be spot on or or you're going to have people riding off into the sunset. Go 180 degrees the wrong way uh, in the middle yeah. of the dune, the gas, <laughs> lost. On a, exactly, on a warm day. And, that, and there was a lot of people. I mean, it, 
everybody on, I think, yeah, it was day three, I think was the big dune, dune day yeah. where everybody kind of came back in. Or was that four? I'm trying to remember. Three. I had eight gallons of gas and I swear I almost ran out. <laughs> oh, damn. Because I, I ran my, I run my rear tanks 75 mm-hmm. to 100 kilometers and I switched to the front. Mm-hmm. By the time I got to the, the fuel stop at like 130 kilometers in, I was out of gas in the front. Wow. So I don't know how far I can go on the front tanks, but I ran through over four gallons, almost five gallons. Just getting through that. And I was like, wow. it's pretty stressful when you see that, when you see the fuel light come on and you're not at the fuel stop anywhere near it, oh, man. Yeah. And then now, I mean, and then it was hot day. Yeah, I mean, think about was... the other people. Yeah. And it, that, that all adds up hot days, lots of dunes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't make it up the dune once you just added a, a lot more riding to your day. Yeah. Well, and then I heard stories, you know, some of the, uh, you know, one, the sand being really soft and then some of the waypoints, like being at the very tip of the dune. So it wasn't, Yeah, I think that was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. It, it's you cool, can, but you, man, if you're going to go around it. You still have to go back to the top anyways. Yeah. <laughs> so it, no matter it was what, it's only good because you, you just have to hope that it, it's not on the other side of the dune on the top. Mm-hmm. which luckily this year it wasn't, but I think in the other years it was, they'd put it on the other side of the dune. Okay. So you get it right to the top, right as you're about to go over it, and then it clicks. Mm-hmm. But if you get your front wheel over, then you're pretty much screwed. Gotcha. Now you got to swing the thing around, come back down, and then go, you know, get around it or on to the next one. Yeah. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah, but yeah, the, the dunes were tough this year for sure. It was It was a difficult... Like the riding part of it was mm-hmm. difficult this year, honestly. Yeah. Last year, I think it was more navigation. Mm-hmm. This year mm-hmm. I had a few good days, of actual real good navigation last half of the day. Mm-hmm. And um, I really liked that too. Yeah. Well, it makes it, it makes it interesting and it levels the playing field for sure. You know, you get it. You got to be, you can't just be fast. You got to be able to navigate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what, um, so I'm, I was just thinking on the training you mentioned Andal- Andalusia earlier. Um, you were you were out there with Skyler, right? Didn't you guys go and do some training yeah. over over on that? Yeah, we had uh, Bart Vandervelden from Bastikar. He's mm-hmm. like the team manager. Mm-hmm. Basically, drove us all around Europe for a month. Nice. Pretty grateful about that. Yeah. Um, but anyways, after Andalusia, we drove straight to Jordi Villadoms, the team manager of Red Bull KTM, mm-hmm. the, the rally team. Yeah. We were there for about a week doing some roadbook training, seeing how the, the KTM guys do it. Mm-hmm. And then we went to Holland and we did like another week or two of riding there. Just Bart says, you want to ride? Here's a bike. It was pretty nice. <laughs> That's awesome. And... It- did you notice stuff in the roadbook? Like, do they do roadbooks differently? Did you pick up stuff to do and in incorporating your own roadbook? Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of new things that I've started doing with mine. For example, like, it probably means nothing to anybody who doesn't know what it means, obviously. But cat moy and adding more, just like this the style of roadbook. Like, if there's a million trails, instead of putting an arrow and drawing all the trails, you just say you have to get lucky and pick the right one basically. So you're not, you're never leaving out information. Mm -hmm. You're giving all the information necessary while still making it difficult navigation. And that's something that's pretty good. I think because before I would, you think you're making a difficult navigation because you're leaving information out, but that's not really, that doesn't seem fair to me. I think you should make it difficult by adding all the information and the actual navigation being difficult. So that's what I learned from Jordy kind of is add just the perfect amount of information. Don't leave anything out. Yeah. So that more. So that would be right. So that would be, I mean, and and yeah, for the ones playing the home game. So that's basically your cap heading. So your compass heading, and then it's like a more or less. Exactly. Yeah. And then in your center tulip, instead of having, you know, having to draw these 10 trails that peel off in different directions, you just kind of give a general arrow and, and then you have that cap heading. Yeah, exactly. A kilometer down the road, if the trail starts going too far left, you need to pick up on that and know that you need to start going right. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that that makes it difficult. Yeah. 
And but I mean, then that's this is stuff that these guys. I mean, that's all they do over there. They don't really do sprint racing. You know, the, yeah, the, what we would consider sprint racing, right? The off road loop races and stuff like that. Yeah, there's more people doing that. So of of all the places that you rode, was there was there a favorite? Yeah, definitely Holland because we went to from Holland. We went to Germany and like we we're everywhere. We. From Holland, you can get to anywhere. We went to all the MXGP tracks. We went to Jeffrey Hurling's backyard, basically, mm -hmm. riding the tracks there. By the way, you think sand here is difficult. You've never done sand, apparently, <laughs> because Skylar and I, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say Skylar had a hard time, but we, we were done about the same time as uh, as maybe a beginner would be done here at Glen Helen, you know? Like, we, we, we couldn't last over there. Really? Riding is difficult. Yeah, it's insane. So they say deep sand. You you get in the sand, you can't control your bike. You give it gas, and it goes where it wants to. Wow. So, I don't understand how they ride so good there. <laughs> and so, okay, so now comparing Glamis to the Dunes and Sonora to that. So. Um, a really, really, really hot day mm -hmm. in Glamis, super soft sand. Is like a wet day there, basically. <laughs> oh, damn. So, so they, like it's like the, they make this sand for this. <laughs> it's like the same texture of, like, sand, difficult to get through. Mm -hmm. But it's like that when it's wet there. That's crazy. So it's pretty crazy, yeah. yeah. Like oh, and then there's also trees. We were riding through trees on, like, hiking trails. It was like a million people out because it was, like, COVID time. Mm-hmm. We we're just like riding on sidewalks, saying hi to all the the locals, talking to the horses, uh, <laughs> just cutting right across people's farms. Don't tell anyone, but <laughs> no, 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 nobody. <laughs> I gotta yeah, figure was... out how to block this uh, from going into Holland. <laughs> yeah, honestly, you should because Bart might not be happy. He probably doesn't even know we were doing that. Yeah. You see a you see a cop, you don't stop because you're on like a. $40,000 rally bike, you're never getting the bike back if you get pulled over. Wow. Just riding it in another country. Yeah. So there's, I mean, so one thing that rings true and everybody that we've talked to has said it and you're, you're saying it now is basically if, if you get into rally raid, it's an adventure. You're going to see the world. You're going to see the world. You're going to meet new people. People are nicer over here. They say you meet the nicest people on a Honda. <laughs> You haven't met the people with the rally tower and a road book holder. It's a whole other. They, I think they are truly the nicest people. Yeah. We we met French people. You know how French people hate Americans? Mm -hmm. It's all different when they got a road book holder. Regis, yeah. perfect example. They yeah. call him Frenchy. I, not very creative if you ask me, but uh, he's a pretty cool guy. He came over uh, a couple weeks before Sonora. We did some training. Mm -hmm. He just... Dude drove from San Francisco to come to my house and ride. I think that's just so awesome. Yeah. And it's very it's very true. If anybody's ever... Like more people... Ju just to try and get more people, even to go just to the events and check out the bivouacs. Mm -hmm. Like there's tons of... Everybody is like... Everybody shows up to the line... You were there, you know, obviously you were there all five stages and, and saw it and were part of it. Like everybody just shows up and they're just, you know, shooting and, and talking about the previous day's adventures yeah. or whatever. Like, you know, it's not like I think it's very different from desert racing. Desert racing is like all game face. You show up to the bomb and you're like, don't talk to me. You're you're on the start line for the liaison to the special. And you're like, hey, yeah. how's it going? Yesterday was crazy. Good luck today. Yeah. Get to the start of the special. Everybody's going pee. We're exercising, having a good time, getting ready to go out for a three-hour sprint. Mm -hmm. Nobody's worried about anything. We're just here to ride. No drama, no stress. Yeah. Have fun. Very, very, I think very that's different. Best. Yeah. Well, and that's like, I mean, for me, you know, catching up, like I spent time with, uh, with Mike Johnson, Mo Hart and, uh, Jim Pearson in their, in their mm -hmm. camp and just listen to everybody talk, you know, and just all the adventures or when you guys would come in and I'll hang out in the, you know, at the rally comp 
uh, area when you guys were coming in and I was pulling times and all that stuff. It's like everybody's mm-hmm. just talking about their adventures already and how it was. And like, there's no, uh, there's no like that rivalry, like, oh, don't talk to me. I'm so and so. Or it's like, no, everybody's yeah. just chill and everybody just talks to everybody. And it's, and it's really, really cool. And then you yeah, get to hear yeah, all exactly. the stories. <laughs> yeah. I, I wish I had better stories. I honestly, I get to the finish line and I forget what just happened the whole day. It takes me like a couple days to remember what just happened. Kind of catch up on on it. Well, yeah. you it, see so much stuff in yeah. such a short period of time. It's difficult it's like, to. It's difficult to comprehend. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. But I mean, that's that's what rally rate is, right? I mean, you can go out yeah. see the world. So. There was there was a there's supposed to be like a crashed airplane out there or something. Mm-hmm. Never saw it. There, I think it was in the road book last year too. Never saw it. Yeah. Just you got to be looking mm-hmm. for sure, and it's hard. It's hard to remember. Like you're there to have fun sometimes. Yeah, because uh, it's obviously a race, mm-hmm. but it's a really fun race. Yeah, it's very. It's a very different thing, and and I mean, and everybody like. I mean, you're you're going there and and to be competitive. I mean, uh, what you were mentioning earlier is like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna hang with them. I'm gonna try and keep up with them and do that. So, and there's you know, I've talked to other guys where it's like. Oh yeah, I stopped and took you know three smoke breaks, and I took a bunch <laughs> of pictures. And, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like stopped for lunch. I had one guy one year tell me that they were having difficulty navigating. They were in a small town. They got to the small town. They decided to peel off, go have lunch, and then rejoin the rally later. That is so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm like, dude. Just, you couldn't do that in a one hour desert race. No, ever. ever. Never do. You have till the sun goes down at a rally or mm-hmm. if you're in the car you have till the race starts the next day that's crazy <laughs> but i mean it's but those are the stories you know and then they get upset well why am i getting a penalty because you did not finish the stage in time because you were busy having tacos you know <laughs> it's very it's like simple it's actually you know, because you're like well whatever i'll go ride today don't, i don't care got yeah. another whole other day yeah got the rest of the week to ride yeah, exactly. Yeah, maybe right. I'll go do it again. I don't care. It was fun. <laughs> yeah, just don't run me by any more taco stands, and we will be a cool. Yeah, it's kind of their fault, huh? Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> they didn't have to make the road book go through that town. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's fun. So, uh, tell me about Dakar. What's uh, what's the plan? Uh, well, my plan is basically, I need more time on a rally bike. So Bart's going to – Bart invited me to come back down to Holland and do some more training. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we're going to go do some more days with Jordy and uh, just get some more seat time in. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, the next race is definitely going to be the car because um, basically every other rally out there costs just, costs just as much as the car because it's not in America. Gotcha. So. Uh, we need to, we need to save all the money we can for the big race. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, basically just a lot of training, a lot of practice. Yeah, can't you can't ever get enough practice? Mm-hmm. Well, it's the the doing two things at once. Well, like you said, I mean, it's your you feel the the navigation is is your strong your strong suit. Yeah, I feel like the I feel like the only reason I. One of the big reasons why I can have my name so far up the list is because of my navigation. Mm-hmm. But if I want to be really competitive, I need to I need to get some more experience and actually learn how to ride mm-hmm. the way the, the pros do. Yeah. Well then I'm sure, you know, they have well I, I guess that would be cool because if you're if you're gonna spend that much time with Bart and those guys, uh and they're gonna have a similar bike for you that you can ride, um, you know, that that'll be the opportunity to learn maybe some of the suspension stuff, some of the stuff that you may be able to bring back and apply to yours here. Yeah, exactly. Just yeah. just being around those people, it's so helpful because you learn stuff you'd never learn in a million years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, it, it changes the learning curve, you know, where you're here having to try to figure out this 2020, you know, rally bike, which, you know, nobody really rides around here anyway. I mean, it's like nobody has one. Yeah. <laughs> so well, that's why I've been trying to hang out with Skylar, I guess, just trying to steal all his factory secrets. Yeah. All, all the secret sauce. Yeah, I've, been, I've just been trying to learn to him. Skyler's been kind of my mentor, honestly. Yeah. They've gotten uh, gotten a chance to pick up on on some stuff. Yeah, 
are these uh, exactly. your twenty twenty is running the larger forks on it, right? What are they like fifty something millimeter? No, no, no. My mine have the the same cone valves you'd buy from like your local dealership, the the forty eights. Okay. I think the fifty twos are like six grand just for the forks. Ugh. Then you gotta get the oversized trip clamp. It's a lot of money. Yeah. It's but, like over ten grand just to get all the, the, the bigger suspension. Just to do all that. It's obviously better than the EXC 500 stock suspension, mm-hmm. like I was running last year. So that's yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah, well, unlike you said, I mean, the bike it just feels the bike just feels more secure already. Yeah. yeah so, but I, like I don't know else. what it really feel like on a rally bike. I don't know what the difference is, mm-hmm. but they look pretty sweet. Yeah. Well, we know we know a guy that's got a husky that might you know let you throw a leg over it. Yeah, I asked him, and he's pretty protective over that thing. <laughs> he saw nope. Yeah, eh, you know, I could, I could see, but, but I mean, either way, I mean, like, yeah, you're still talking about the the fifty twos on these bikes, uh, the fifty two millimeter forks. That's kind of a newer. They're huge. Uh, yeah, you look at the bike and you're going, dude, that thing is all fork tube. Yeah, you look on that like the the stanchion mm-hmm. all the way to the lug. It's like almost bigger than the fork lug where the axle goes through. Yeah. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah. But, but you know, still, uh, 48s, cone valve, tuned right, is still going to be super competitive. It's not like it's not. Yeah, it's not like it's not amazing because they are amazing, in my opinion. Yeah. So, you know, a little more a little more tuning and seat time, like you said, and then, you know, off to the races. Yeah, exactly. Nice. nice. So when, uh, when does the adventure start? Uh, go back with Bart and those guys? Um... You guys pick a date some, already? Some, sometime in the summer, I guess. Okay. I, I got a COVID vaccine first shot ah. recently, just so it's easier to get over yeah. the other countries. I don't really know if you need it for the airplane, but I think you need it to get off the airplane. Oh, gotcha. When you land. Yeah. yeah. And I just, it's easier than getting a shot every three days or a, a nose. Test. Yeah. Yeah. Brain dig. <laughs> I had to do that right before Sonora, and then I went, and then I found out that one of the uh, local pharmacies had the the Johnson and Johnson one. So I got my six G upgrade before I went to Sonora. And so yeah, but yeah, and kind of you it's just you know what this is okay. Apparently, this is just going to make it easier to travel and do things. So you know, all right, mm. whatever. I basically did it because my mom said it's easier for her. Oh, okay. <laughs> it makes it makes uh, it just simplifies a lot of things. A lot less appointments. Yeah. Yeah. A lot less pain. Well, actually, that's not even true. My arms like. Oh yeah. Them. Which one did you get, Moderna or Pfizer? Uh, Pfizer. Oh, okay. I've heard better. Everybody that I work with that got the Moderna one, yeah, shot number two really wiped them out. So, but I haven't heard anything about Pfizer doing that. So. Yeah, my mom. Be- my mom felt pretty bad after her second shot. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, and that's, you know, I completely didn't even mention anything about that, but that's actually really cool. So you had the whole family with you at Sonora, huh? Yeah, actually that was pretty much the best part. Nice. Talk about factory support. I had better than factory support, honestly. Yeah. I, my brother, my dad, Felipe, my mom, mm-hmm. anything I ask, I'm just like, I need a drink of water, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, no. Actually, no, that didn't even happen. They, they were like forcing okay. me to drink water. I tried to do my own tires. Uh-huh. I was embarrassing the pit crew, apparently. So <laughs> I, I, had to, I had to sit back down and drink more water. There you go. They, they spent like five hours just – they were working on the bike longer than I rode it every day. <laughs> like, the, it's true, though. Yeah. Every day, longer than I rode it, they were working on it. Yeah, Making me like this – Going over every last part, yeah. cleaning it, make it look shiny, yeah. ready to go for the next day. Nice. And so, how does the uh, so how does the dynamic ex- explain the pit crew to me? What what does mom uh, do? What does dad do? Felipe, your brother, what are they? What's the my my mom is uh, food, mm-hmm. navigation pill, mm-hmm. keep me calm, tell me what to do in the morning, don't be crazy. Okay. Um, pictures, yeah. love and affection. There you go. Uh, my brother, he's honestly like 
he knows everything about dirt bikes. He knows everything about factory stuff. Like he looks at his dirt bike and says, I need a different axle nut because factory Husky has a different axle nut. So I'm going to get that factory Husky axle nut. So he basically just tells my dad and, uh, our friend Felipe and David Mm -hmm. who were there. He tells them what to do. He's like the head mechanic, I would say. Okay. My dad is like the stressed guy. He's like, got to make sure everything is 100%. Okay. And then, and Felipe is the unstressed guy, but he's going to get everything done. All right. So we kind of need everybody. Yeah. Last year, it was just me, my dad, and Felipe and David. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't, if we didn't have Felipe, we probably would have just went home early after day one because... My dad was stressed. Yeah. Like a million hours in the middle of Mexico, snore in Mexico, bikes broken. I'm on the sat phone and horses, people are coming up to me. I'm all, I was on the phone with my mom mm-hmm. and these dudes came up to me and they started yelling at me and I don't speak Spanish. Yeah. I don't know what they're saying. And I'm like, mom, I don't know what to do. They're yelling at me. Thought I was going to die. <laughs> My dad came 100 miles an hour in the spinner van through a river, drifting. I swear he was going faster than (laughs) side-by-sides. Saved the day. He said, keep going. And then they pulled me off early, even though I was already past people. Ah, it's this whole thing, you know. Yeah. Year one was a, it was a learning. It was learning. Yeah. Anyways, the dynamic, great dynamic. Great people. Love them. Well, and that's, you know, you know, you get to share that experience with your family and like say everybody's got, you know, everybody's got their role on the team that they play and everybody's role is important as the next person's on the team. So, so it's awesome to yeah, have exactly. there. And I mean, and, and be supportive. I'm mean, like, dude, you're doing big things. Like literally you're talking, uh, you've got to be probably one of the youngest competitors, right? Headed, you know, with, with, the, with the car in the books, like looking to, to go. Yeah, I think so. My mom was saying like, 10 years younger than the guys who are doing good. Yeah. The guys who are doing good, I mean. Yeah. So um, I, w- I want to be doing good and be young. I think it's a – it feels cool to say 19 and have my name next to people like Kendall Norman, Justin Morgan, Skyler, Ricky, Nacho. Exactly. I think that's the <laughs> part is just you now like I have a few years to be as good as them. Yeah. And my dad told me, he was like, I'm there now. And I think about that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're like, it would be one thing if, well, with the navigation skills, it, it, that's the cool part about rally, right? Everybody ends up seated where they're going to be seated. Your navigation, exactly. your riding skill and all of that stuff. So your name was always floating up to the top. It wasn't like it was down at the bottom and down, you know, riding clean days and that kind of stuff. So yeah, you're right there, you know, and the difference yeah, is, I just try to stay consistent. Yeah. And, and I mean, and consistency comes with practice and with time and, you know, all, all the age old, you know, stuff that, you know, is smooth as fast and da da all that stuff, you know, everybody already knows that stuff, but, but you're already there, you know, you're, you're getting to that. Well, I, I, what I meant to say was like almost there, yeah. basically there, but yeah. same thing. Yeah. I want to be, there. that's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the other side of it too, is you can't be conformist. So, which is what you're not, which is good. You know, so I, I could do better. I know I could do this. I know I could do that. So, yeah. And you got a pretty good plan. Man. You're gonna go Holland, do some training. And that's yeah, I'm be, pretty excited. <laughs> that's epic. <laughs> when I saw you guys, the other so, home, so and where? Uh, so all the way back to the beginning, where did uh, where did you you get started? I mean, obviously it was out in the desert and and doing races and stuff like that. So who, whose fault was it? Was it your dad that got you the bike? Was my mom dad? It, it was my dad. My dad, honestly, he's so good at riding. He's got like a lot of number one plates, expert 250 class and everything in district racing. Mm-hmm. And then out of nowhere, he's just like, he decided he was going to go slower. Okay. He's like, everything changes when, uh, when you got kids apparently. Mm-hmm. So we started racing. Uh, he still raced, got more number one plates. Mm-hmm. Really good. Um, I'm not good at talking. Mm-hmm. Doing this, this is good for me because I, I want to learn how to talk. Obviously, yeah. Um, I need to. I need to be. I need to learn how to be smoother. Nah. But 
district racing. We we my dad started doing district races because someone invited him out there. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm not gonna do it unless there's a race for my kids. Mm-hmm. So the first time he ever did a district race, well, that's not true. First time we ever went to a district race, there was a kids race, and he's like, All right, we're racing. So he kind of got hooked, and he's like, "It's our turn." Nice. I think that was in like 2010 or something. Yeah. Nice. Well, and then, Anyways, and then we off had, to the races. <laughs> yeah. And, well, and here we are doing, doing desert GP stuff. Yeah. And I was just like, I want to go further. 100 miles National Hand Hound. It's not enough. Yeah. No. Yeah. Three, four, five hundred kilometer days is uh, seems to be about right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe we'll do a few few longer days than that in the car. Yeah. Oh yeah. And that'll be enough. We'll see. We'll see if I'm tired. I don't know. Might be kind of tired. Yeah. Should probably start eating now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's getting the getting the the diet and getting everything. I mean, it's. Uh, I, I guess one guy I would tell you, uh, to maybe talk to about riding really long distances, uh, Colton Udall. He's like, yeah, the, I talked to him a lot <laughs> Four 600 mile. I mean, like he, he will put some miles down on a bike. So like, he's, so, but you're already talking to him. So now well, that's yeah. Fenora last year, I started talking to him a lot just yeah. cause super nice guy. He is. He's very, very like, you know, so a lot of people is like I've been around off road racing for a long time, but now, now talking to people and in, in the bivouacs and and just treating us like, dude, everybody's just so chill and down to earth. You know, it's not mm. a, it's it's not the the like I said, kind of like the hare and hounds, and you can feel that vibe. I've I've been to one hare and hound over at District Thirty Seven over on this this side of the. Well, no, that's mm. your your neck of the wood too. Yeah, so it's yeah, you can feel that vibe. You know, it's just you walking through the yeah. pits and kind of like everybody's checking everybody. And, you know, it just it's, it's kind of like different. it's like a, everybody's got their own group and in rally. Everybody works together. Yeah, exactly. Like there really is no like just us, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And that's what everybody. Uh, that's what makes it unique. Um, yeah. Nice. So what, uh, all right, so on the personal side of things, are you still in school, college, are you studying engineering? What are you, what are the plans? Um, for like a year now, since I graduated, basically, mm-hmm. I've just been doing college classes, summer and winter. Okay. Uh, when I was in Andalusia, I was doing school, like computer programming classes. Okay. And I thought that was a lot of work. I'm still doing that, obviously. Like. Yeah. Every Monday through Thursday, I got college classes, mm-hmm. and then I help my dad at, with his work whenever I'm not doing school. Okay. And then if I can find time, I'll be making road books in between classes and hoping for some free weekends to actually go ride them with my dad. Nice. So does your dad do road books as well? Yeah, he's pretty good at it. Okay, nice. Oh. Uh, I've been telling him I want to get him to actually do a race. I was like, it doesn't need to be about me, Dad. We can all have fun. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the... He's too nice. (laughs) Well, he he wants to see you. You know, he wants to see you in the limelight, so... Yeah. Nice. Well, that's pretty cool. And so where was there... Did they have an influence on you getting into Rally? Or, or where did that come from? Basically, I told my dad that the reason why I went to the adventure ride was because I told my dad, I want to go really far, fill up, and go really far. Mm-hmm. They're like, let's go do an adventure ride. We got 500s, and we just started doing long-distance riding. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of all my dad's fault, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it sounds like a horrible thing to blame him for. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, that's that's awesome. I mean, it's true. You're, you're yeah. really going to go far in rally racing. And like I said, everything else, I mean, worst you can do on a on a dirt bike is going to be, what, the Baja 1000 Ironman it? Or something yeah. like that, you know. 
Yeah. But then again, you've probably ridden those same roads, you know, a billion times. Have you been over to the Baja side yet? I've only been to Mexico three times, and that is basically for Sonora. Okay. Sonora riding, Mm -hmm. racing twice, practice once. That was before Sonora. They had a school. I've never been anywhere else. Yeah. I want to. Yeah. There, there is a lot to see on the uh, on the coast side of things for sure. Yeah, I've heard a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mike Sky and all that stuff. What about your dad? I'm sure your dad's probably been over there too, right? Never been there. No, doesn't hasn't seen anything. Oh man, we've been to Costa. We we went. We did the Costa Rica Unlimited thing. That's about the craziest thing we've ever done. Yeah, really, as a family. All right. Well, went with my mom and my brother and my dad. Rode dirt bikes for a week and then. Drove around Costa Rica, Costa Rica for like another week or two. Yeah. God, that sounds horrible. Why would you ever do that? Because my mom's <laughs> boss. Oh, is your mom's idea? Yeah, basically. She's the boss. Ah. Well, that was a horrible idea. I'm glad she made you guys do it. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we know, we happen to know a lot of people that know a lot about Baja, so... Yeah, we'll definitely, uh, definitely do some rides down on that uh, on that side. There's a lot of stuff to see for sure. So, be cool to get you guys over on that side. Yeah, well, definitely. Right now, uh, the focus is the car. Yeah, um, probably not anywhere near close to being in the budget to do anything but the car. Mm-hmm. I, I actually stopped doing like any racing. Okay. This year, and a lot of stuff last year, just to make sure I was like. I want to be ready to race mm-hmm. a rally and uh, just saving money, basically. Yeah. Nice. Well, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it, in talking to Skylar, it's, it is definitely a big financial undertaking for sure. Uh, yeah. He's basically sold everything, done a lot of fundraising. Mm-hmm. That's actually part of our plan. Do some, uh, do some road book rides, mm-hmm. maybe get some new t-shirt designs. Uh, I think the face masks with the hat and a shirt, how could you not buy all three? Right. Right. So that might be the next, one of the next things with the wildfire moto mm-hmm. is the guy's Instagram. Talk to him a lot at Sonora and yeah. maybe work together on some things. There you go. Yeah. I mean, everything in the end is, everything's going to add up, you know, it's, whether it covers travel expenses or food or whatever it is, everything just adds up. So, Yeah. That'd be awesome. And then Moto Minded, right? Moto Minded's uh, helping you out with the people with the Sonora Tower purchases. Yes, exactly. I was going to bring that up uh, naturally, but um, you did a great job right there. <laughs> Chris Vessel. This like, was not a paid advertisement, by. <laughs> he's Chris from Moto Minded is super supportive. Like ever since the beginning, he's basically the reason why I went to the Scott Bright School. I think he actually told us about it. Yeah. So. If you want to say who like is the reasoning for doing rally, it's honestly him. Um, he really got us into it by introducing us to the right people. Yeah. Obviously helps us with the towers. Mm-hmm. He's helping us raise some money by every tower sold this year until the car. We get a little bit of the, the change from it. Um, towers are great. Jake argue right proved that this year, I think. I, I kind of saw <laughs> the, the, the the factory KTM OEM part broke. The Correct. Windshield. Everything else was fine. I and I was gonna say I looked at it when it came in. I'm going, ooh, this is this is gonna be ugly because I saw the piece, the top piece of the the windshield missing, the windscreen missing. Yeah. And then I started looking. I'm going, no, roadbook looks it's straight. 100%, it's, yeah, it's the only problem was the windshield that comes from KTM, and I was like, <laughs> that's an awesome look for moto minded right there yeah everything yeah, everything's straight every he went over the bars like yeah you crash your bike and the bike is perfect and i've seen that happen so many times at other rallies and it's like then they're there for like a half hour trying to figure out how they're going to get the tower to stay on the bike again so they can yeah. finish the route you know or finish the day stage so that speaks very highly of yeah. of what chris did with that tower yeah, a lot of a lot of hours, obviously, going into testing, and mm-hmm. a lot of people helping him out by buying the tower. They break something, he'll know it because they let him know. 
Mm-hmm. He creates a better part for it. Everything's changeable and on it. Like yeah. it's super good design. It is. And it's light enough. I mean, convenient enough. Cause I mean, you, how many miles would you say you've put on your 500 with that tower or hours? I think, hours. I think there's like a hundred and a hundred and somewhere between 105, 110 hours on the new moto minded V3 tower. Then the other one that's on my dad's bike, mm-hmm. definitely over 200 hours, 200 something hours. Yeah. And it's perfect condition. Yeah. So that's, that's a lot. So it's not like, cause in a, in a crash, it's anybody's game, right? I mean, you, yeah, obviously it's not, yeah, it's not designed for that, but now two, 300, what I'm hearing is like 300 hours total just between both of you. On Regular these. riding, it yeah. will hold up. Yeah. And that's where you would expect to see, like, with the vibration, you would see the cracks, you know, start to show the bowls, the things, the fatigue. Yeah. Um, and no, and it's still there. So, yeah. Pretty quality stuff. Yeah. So, no, he's definitely done a good, and it, and it looks sharp. You know, fins and everything. Yeah, it, it looks, looks good. good. Yeah. He did a good job. Sweet. Well, it is, uh, it's Friday. It's the weekend. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's time to go riding for you, right? My mom was like. On a Friday night, he wants to spend it with you. <laughs> I yeah. Like, oh, I forgot it's Friday. I know. All day. Well, listen, don't grow up. It's a trap because then all you do is work. <laughs> I yeah. do have to work tomorrow. <laughs> Wake up in the morning, finish the rest of school, then work on motorcycles. That sounds horrible. <laughs> I'm rebuilding someone's 1995 CR250 doing full bottom top end. Yeah. Fork seals are leaking, so obviously I'm going to learn how to do suspension tomorrow. There you go. Um, we I just dropped off the frame to get it powder coated. Nice. I'm pretty much learning everything at once. Not that I haven't done it before, mm-hmm. mid race even, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's a, in a more controlled environment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's nice when you actually have all the tools. To do it right, learning how to do it right, and that's the best part. Yeah. No, that's good. Then they'll be awesome. So, are you posting that on your social media so people can see what you're doing on that? Uh, I've been taking a few pics here and there. Okay. My dad told me I should uh, tell people on social media that I'm actually doing things other than riding dirt bikes. Yeah, absolutely. But when you're busy, you know, you don't think about that stuff. True. I've I've learned that just take a bunch of pictures randomly and then mm. come back later on and post them. That that's what I've been trying to do. But even then, I was like, "Mom, I didn't post a picture today." And she's like, "You post plenty." And I'm like, "But I didn't post it. Only to my story. It's way different." <laughs> oh, and that's a whole other can of worms. Like, well, what time to post? What hashtags to use? What, yeah, because then if you don't post at a good time, then you get like half the likes. Correct. <laughs> so, so it matters. So, so there's a whole another another game. So you're you're gonna need a social media manager, which sounds like maybe mom can help with that. She's pretty good at it so far. That's why we have the core off road Instagram now. Nice. There we Posting go. about me and Carter make us both look good. There you go. Yeah, you gotta have that build that following up and all that stuff. I'll give you a I'll I'll shoot you a, a message with a tool that I use uh, that helps make the Instagram thing a little easier. So that way you don't have to. I read. heard there was like. There's a thing where, like, you get all your pictures for the week. Was it you telling me this? Get all the pictures for the week, write the thing, and then it posts for you or something. Yeah, there's a program called Later that does that. It wasn't me that told you that, but, yeah, there's there's a program that, that we use that will help uh, that you can do that with. And, yeah, just put everything together and then just send it, and then it'll it'll just post it. So you don't have to remember to post it at a certain time of day or whatever. It just does it automatically. It's We're doing not- a lot of good shout outs tonight. Maybe I should just do a few more. Rally Moto Shop, <laughs> there you Mom go. And Dad, my brother, David, uh, Felipe, <laughs> whole Baron family. Uh, there you go. DC Racing, John Tallarico, everybody I could think of, RNS Electronics, Tony, really far away guy, super awesome, super helpful. Jordy for the good messages throughout the week. Chris Vessel for all his support and the training without him, I wouldn't have a bike to learn how to ride road books. So what a great guy. Nice. Um, and uh bingo, good boy racing. All right. See, you got, you got this down. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, so I've gotten a lot of trophies in the past, right? But nobody's ever there to really cheer for me. Yeah. 
Well, there's, you know, whether you know it or not, there's, there's always people it's, in your it's, corner. <laughs> it's different when you, when you like, when you're thinking about people are going to hear you talk, right? Mm-hmm. And then it gets stressful. I, I was telling my mom, I'm more stressed about this podcast than I was lining up wow, for the race. Right. Every, right. Like this, yeah. this is big for me. Yeah. Well, don't worry about it. You're doing, you're doing just fine. I like, and that's Actually, why I took, that's why I don't send, uh, why I don't send scripts. Like everybody that you've heard that I've interviewed, everybody is like, they have no idea what I'm going to ask them. And for the same reason, cause it's just a conversation. So whether yeah. it's on TV or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It's just a conversation. Yeah. So you got it. You got it. So cool. Well, thank you for having me. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, I'm glad you took the time. I mean, I know you got between school and between all the rally and working on the bikes and all that stuff, you got stuff going down. So I appreciate you taking well, there's the always time. There's always time for social media. There you go. <laughs> we'll get the word out and get you get you some more followers. So I'll uh I will get uh I will get with you offline and get the your social media stuff and all of that, any links and stuff like that that we want to put on the episode. Uh, and then I will get this probably, I was thinking of publishing it tonight, but we'll publish it on Sunday. And so you'll be, right, perfect. you'll be the episode, the first episode back after Sonora rally. Sweet. Nice. All right. Thank you. Yeah, of course, Mason. Thank you for all the pictures throughout the week that you've <laughs> talked to me, to me every day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. I'm glad you had a good rally too. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah I'm excited to time. see the future, dude. This is going to be awesome. So, yeah. Awesome. All right, sir. Will you have a good evening and say hi to the fam- family for me? You too. All have right. a good night. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. So that was Mason Klein. Pretty cool. I, I mean, I'm stoked. 19 years old. I didn't know how old he was, but 19 years old and on his way. Uh, so this is uh, this is crazy. And, you know. Uh, we talked a little bit about it, and, and that's, I mentioned it. It's like, I don't like to script podcasts or anything like that. I've in the past, it's like, oh, you should have some prep questions on stuff. But you know what? It takes away from the organic feel of the conversation. So on the technical side of things is the podcasts, I don't generally edit them. I don't cut the stuff out that's said because it's just a conversation between people. And this is absolutely awesome. Uh, Mason is doing big things, uh, already lining up. It really caught me off guard when we were talking about the start on day two and leading, leading out. And to me, that's a big deal because for in previous events, like say at Baja rally, right? It was always the person that led out was the one that um, it's like in off-road racing. You generally, if you're the last to sign up or whatever it is, they put you at the back of the field and that's just the norm. That's just how it goes. Unless you request a rear start, then they really, really put you at the back of the field. So one of the years at Baja Rally, we did that. We had a couple people that weren't at the drawing, and it was like, oh, okay, well, yeah, they just go at the back of the field. Um, and then I was quickly, it was quickly brought to my attention that that's not actually, that's giving them an advantage rather than a disadvantage. So it was like, okay, well, they're now they got to go up to the front, um, which you know, okay, cool, I get it. You know, the the end result is you want to be fair with everybody, and so to me. Um, seeing that and then hearing Mason say like, no, you know, I, I, I'm okay with being out front leading out and doing that, that I'm I'm just going to send, I'm just going to do it. And, and he did it. And that was, I mean, that's, that's just huge to me. I mean, it's an awesome, awesome thing to see. Um, and, and like I said, at 19 years old and the names, like we said in rally, it's just, once you get the stages going, they just kind of float to where they're going to be. And to see Mason's name up towards the top uh, really shows, you know, the the effort and and the ability, you know, and it's and like I said, you know, the navigation and the writing skill. And don't you know, I'm going to say is he's bearing. I think he's being humble about the writing ability, uh, which is good. It's always good to be humble. But um, it just like most of the other guys on bikes, even if they only let him go to second gear, I have a chance in hell of trying to catch him. He is still very fast, so it's not like when we're talking, you know, riding ability. It's no, he is he is very quick. Um, so only only going to get better with time. And then now, you know, he was talking about being able to ride in Holland and some of these other places is absolutely huge. 
uh, to be able to go and, and, and learn stuff and learn about road books from people that have been doing road books for years. You know, you got to remember that here in the States, we're kind of behind the curve as far as road books, road book rallies, road book racing, reading road books and stuff like that, where over in Europe and some of the other countries, it's like the norm. It's like soccer. Soccer is not as popular here as it is as, you know, the religion that it is in other countries. And the same goes for rally raids and, and road books. Um, it's the same thing here in the, in the States, you know, not as many or not as big a following. There's a big following, right? A lot of people watch the car, but not a lot of people are jumping, you know, all right, time to order all the stuff from uh, rally moto shop or moto minded. And I'm going to get my bike set up and I'm going to go road book racing. It just does not happen that way yet. So hopefully with this podcast, we can get them there. So anyway, uh, we're going to wrap it up. We're up, uh, to about an hour, 10 now. So I think that's a pretty good place to stop. So as mentioned at the end of, uh, talking with Mason, we're going to get, uh, we're going to get it set up. Uh, I will get the links in there. I'll get the links to the tower from moto minded, Uh, that we're talking about and that remember the proceeds are going to help Mason's effort to get to Dakar uh, and what he's doing there and supporting him there. So if you're looking at setting up a bike uh, for either, you know, either rally raid, which is cool. That's what we want to do. Or if it's just to do some long distance traveling and you want to have a tower on there, um, you know, you have that, that available from moto minded. And so I can tell you, I saw it with my own eyes. I saw when Jacob argue bright, uh, brought uh, brought the KTM 500 uh, Mason's practice bike uh, to the line and had a little off and 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 smoked that front windshield. The tower was straight, and I looked and it without you know I was just really without even thinking about it. I was already looking to see okay what's bent, what's done, and this and that, and nothing. So I was absolutely stoked uh, to see that, and that's a testament to what uh, Chris has designed over at Moto Minded. So absolutely excited. Uh, big shout out to on that one. That was absolutely crazy. Uh, Jacob did have a bit of a rough go uh, with the motors of the Cowies uh, and Mason right away without skipping a beat, stepped up to the plate and allowed him to use uh, his practice bike to finish out the rallies and, and finish out the rally stages and stuff like that. So it's absolutely huge. Uh, very, very, very cool. So it is a testament to the spirit that you find in the rally raid uh, bivouac. So I hope more people will go want to watch this or at least hang out and do this. I mean, there's got to be uh, more ways to get involved. If you want to volunteer for the events and stuff like that, reach out to the local organizations. You've got Sonora Rally. You've got Baja Rally as well. So you've got some some different events that you can go to and check out and at least see. And I'll, I'm telling you now, it's a different experience. So I hope to see you guys out there. I'm going to be uh, working with Rally Comp uh, at the Baja Rally uh, coming up in a couple of months. So more details on that. We'll probably have Scotty Bloom from uh, Baja Rally on the show as well. I want to talk to him a little bit about road book making uh, since he is the he is the guy when it comes to making those. Uh, and then stay tuned. We're going to have more episodes uh, coming up. We're going to recap with more of the guys from Sonora Rally and how their their event went and see if maybe there's some stuff that there's some knowledge that they are willing to part on us uh, to help get more people in there. So Anyway, all right, that is a wrap. Don't forget to follow us on ChasingWaypoints.com. You'll have the link on Chasing Waypoints Facebook page. uh, So you can like, comment, share that. Uh, That will take you to the website. And then also check us out on Instagram. That is Chasing Waypoints underscore official on Instagram. Once again, Chasing Waypoints underscore official. And then you can find us. Where else can you find us? Oh, on YouTube. We're also on YouTube. Not as much going on there, but we will start having podcasts there soon. Uh, we'll be doing uh, some video stuff so you guys can see my, you know, ugly mug or whatever. Uh, and then these, my very unique artwork here. And yeah. So anyway, hope you guys are having a good week. We are back. We're going to be doing back to doing this weekly again. Again, I apologize for the break, but we were out racing. So, well, we were out at the rally raids. Anyway, see you guys.